Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Also good morning. So I just finished up a 31 hour live stream of playing Diablo 4. Um, since I didn't really have much content for you guys prior, I want to go ahead and talk about my druid, kind of explain a little bit about the leveling, but more so show you guys some gameplay. So let's go ahead and jump right on into it. Um, first things first, a lot of people talk about how druid has such a really shit early game. And whereas that kind of might be true, I personally did not really struggle. Sure, I did a little bit less damage than my friends, but Pulverize is honestly really, really satisfying for leveling. Uh, and you get some really nice Pulverize nodes right away that you can actually find right here. So basically, your Pulverize is going to be your main source of damage combined with Enhanced Pulverize for every 12 seconds while you remain healthy. You will create an overpowered pulverize which the overpower i believe adds your flat life along with your flat fortify as bonus damage that being said i'm gonna go run a quick dungeon and show you guys kind of what some like i guess mid game druid gameplay would look like so i'm gonna go ahead and just jump into like a tier six map so in path of exile terms for you guys this is literally i guess like a tier six map right so we're gonna go ahead and pop this open so now we got to go run right over here. So let's go ahead and do it. And we'll talk about the character while we go. So right now, uh, I do want to state that there are lots of guides floating around. I believe Max Roll has one that covers very similar to exactly what I am doing, right? Um, this is kind of just the situation you end up with in Diablo 4, I guess you could say. It's uh, when you're building around a specific skill, there's only so much you can really change, right? Um, so... Essentially, um, one of the main factors you want for leveling your Pulverized Druid um, is you're going to be looking for a, um, a weapon. So this right here is called Imprinted Pulverize, and you'll notice that uh, it is called the Shockwave Modifier. Now the Shockwave Modifier, to my knowledge, can roll on a weapon, gloves, um, either ring and or amulet. Uh, and from what I'm told, uh, if you guys are doing like the open world events, you see like these little things here. You acquire these uh, this currency called baubles, the or sorry obols that you can see down here. Obols are very similar to Diablo uh, 3's blood shard gambling system, um, so you can essentially uh, gamble those into gloves and hoping that you can find a shockwave aspect. The shockwave aspect will quite literally more than double your damage, which is why there's so much emphasis on it, right? Um, one other thing to note is if you cannot find a shockwave aspect but you also but you instead find a tornado seeks out additional enemies aspect you can actually go ahead and level with a uh with tornado for a while i was actually tornado up until about level 55 when i just wanted to try something different uh and that's when i ended up switching over to this okay so to talk about some more components my character is not fully fleshed out right um, the way Diablo 4 works is think of like Path of Exile, Soul of Self Found. You cannot trade your uniques or your legendaries. And I know it looks like everything I have is like a unique. That's actually not really true. For example, my weapon was actually a yellow weapon. So essentially the way it worked is I would pay attention to all sacred two-handers that dropped. Uh, maces specifically roll overpower. And I was just looking for high base damage. Uh, and then looking for good uh, affixes. So the affixes here would be like overpower damage with Werebear, overpower uh, willpower ultimate skill damage. I don't know how good the ultimate skill damage is, but the stats are very, very good on this weapon. So here's what the gameplay is going to look like. And remember that some of these skills you can technically swap around. Uh, and since we are not using the helmet that makes it so our Earth skills are tagged as Werebear skills, I believe. We will be losing some skills because we can't use all of them in Werebear yet. That's why things are a bit different. Uh, also, for people wondering why I am a permanent bear, the reasoning for that uh, is actually because of this body armor I found here that's giving me plus two to all Werebear skills, and I am permanently a Werebear. Uh, so, let's get started. Essentially, with this gameplay, what you're going to be doing is... You can go ahead, run around, and group some mobs. Then after you have grouped mobs, you want to go ahead and drop, or, uh, slam them right in the face. Now, there's kind of like a sweet spot to uh, this setup when you have Shockwave. And the sweet spot essentially is getting it so that they get hit by the initial Pulverize, and then they also get hit by the Shockwave. To do that, you want to stand, you know, kind of 
Right, kind of like this here, right? And then that hits them with both. You'll notice that there is light blue text that pops up. That light blue text that pops up is your overpower. And you'll notice that there is yellow text that pops up. The yellow text is your critical strike. And then occasionally you will see orange text pop up. Orange is a critical strike with overpower. So basically an overpower hit and then you roll critical strike. Now I've got a lot of other skills on my bar. So number one, the skill I just used there is a howl that makes it so we get 4% of our max life per second. Uh, and it also reduces enemy damage by about 70%. Uh, very, very strong. One of the other key components on it is we make it so it generates fortify for us. Fortify is very important for a druid. So if you notice on my health bar, there's kind of like this outline. The uh, the outline that is on the, the globe here is your fortify amount. So a simple TLDR on your fortify, it reduces damage taken by 10% as long as it meets your life pool. Uh, and you can get modifiers that reduce damage taken while you have vulnerability, or sorry, while you have fortify. Uh, but more importantly, we use this for damage. Uh, and I will explain that in just a minute when we get to our codexes. So, <clears throat> right after clearing this over here, we go ahead and pop up the, uh, well, I guess the item. And if you look at my, let's see, is it, uh, not gloves, right here. You look at this uh, band of retaliation, your core skills deal up to, right now I have 30% increased damage while you have, you know, based on your amount of fortify. As Druid, we always want to maintain our Fortify, and one of the nice things about this, uh, on this specific one that I showed, is you can actually press Y, go to your codexes, and then you can sort by class only, or you can specifically look here, right? So you can look for the codex you want, then you can actually click it, and it will take you to it on the map. And then that way you can go run that dungeon. Once you have actually run the dungeon for the codex, it will be there forever and you can actually extract extract it onto your gear, but it will always be a minimum roll. So this is good for still just like setting up your character during the leveling process. Now you also notice I have like a wolf howl on my number two here. Um, the wolf howl on my number two is very situational. The main reason I'm running it is for extra spirit generation. If you want a more defensive option, I highly recommend running, I will pop it up for you now. <clears throat> I think it's uh, it's this one right here, Earthen Bulwark. Earthen Bulwark also has a um, a uh, power, I always forgot what they're called, uh, that makes it so it lasts 9 seconds instead of 3 seconds. So it's a 45% bubble that you can pop anytime aside from your Grizzly Rage. Um, that also gives you Unstoppable, which means you can use it to CC break. So if you're getting chain locked by like elites, you can actually press the Bulwark and pop out of it. Uh, and then you gain Fortify yet again. On my number three, I have Grizzly Rage, and I will honestly tell you that it takes a lot of setup to make Grizzly Rage feel good. And the main reason for that is when you pop your Grizzly Rage, you lose access to your other types of skills. So for example, I can't use my Earth Spike to generate Spirit, um, and I lose access to my Blood Howl. So I would not say Grizzly is really the most important uh, you'll notice I can do most of my clearing without the Grizzly. It's not a super big deal. But when you set up Grizzly, it becomes a monster. And the main reasoning for that is for every second in Grizzly Rage, I believe you get increased damage. And then if you were to get, say, this effect I have on my amulet, your Grizzly Rage is increased and critical strikes while in Grizzly Rage increase your critical strike damage. That ends up scaling really, really hard. But I would not say it's important for the stage of leveling, right? For the for the early on leveling, by far the most important things you want is you want to make sure that you're getting your <clears throat> shockwave aspect, which is very RNG, unfortunately, because that is directly scaling your pulverize. You also want to make sure you're aiming after your core skills deal increased damage based off your fortify. Now, some other nice things you can do to help scale your damage is you can make it um, so you get this modifier that is, let's see here, where is it? In my boots. Ring? Ah, yes, my ring. So it makes it so Pulverize is now an earth skill. Pulverize deals bone, like, makes these little tectonic slam things, which are these. I don't really care about the tectonic slams. 
But the reason why we want to make it an earth skill is because once it's an earth skill, it can gain some nice synergy. So I will show you here in just a second. Let's just smack this guy in the face. Okay, so once you make your Pulverize an Earth skill, you gain access to new aspects such as damage from Earth skills now slow enemies, and Earth skills deal more critical strike damage to crowd controlled enemies. Well, guess what? You right click, you slow everything, right? Since they're slowed automatically, they're now automatically getting the bonus of the, uh, of the critical strike multiplier. And that takes me to the next part, which is crit. Uh, crit is extremely strong for this build because it's one of the ways you're going to get consistent damage without waiting for that 12 second overpower, right? That being said, it does take a bit for your crit to scale, so I'm not really sure if it's something you want to aim towards during the leveling process, right? I would just focus on, like, you know, your, your more raw damage stats like willpower, for example. Um, and even still going into overpower when leveling, there's there's no harm because a lot of the time I feel that the density when you're leveling is not as big as later, right? Look at it, just rain legendaries. Thank you very much. Okay, then my number four skill, which is called Trample. Now, Trample has a couple re uh, uses. The number one use for it is it's our mobility skill. So I can use it, for example, to go like this, right? Number two, I have it specialized so I gain energy. Now, uh, or sorry, spirit. Instead of making it gain spirit, you could make it fortify, but I don't struggle at all with fortify, so I remove that. One of the other things about it is when I pop my Grizzly Rage, it is one of the few ways that I can get spirit back when I actually need it and I'm not trying to like left click auto attack. So basically I can trample and then ideally from trample I get another pulverize out and sometimes that is just more than enough damage to basically blast, right? Then we move over to our spirit generator. So right now you'll notice in werebear form I cannot use my earth spike. It turned into mole and that's just because as a grizzly I can't use the earth skills unless I end up converting them later, right? Which is something that we're trying to do. Uh, but that is locked by a helmet, so we cannot actually use that yet. <clears throat> so I am currently running Earth Spike, and I hate it, and I don't recommend you run it. I think as a really good generator, I would personally, I think, recommend you go with Storm Spike, because not only does it feel much better, it feels like quicker to use, but um, it will immobilize enemies, which is not really a big reason for it. Uh, the next reason, actually, I will tell you is the main reason which is it applies vulnerability and that makes it so you can basically smack a guy and then kaboom smack a guy kaboom and you're applying vuln uh and you're um, you're basically just getting a much more consistent generator not to mention it also gives you 25 percent damage reduction when you use it and that 25 percent damage reduction really helps a lot with this more melee play style uh, if i was able to use storm strike in this mode i definitely would i just Kind of cannot, right? Okay, so now we're going to be going over to the single target, and you can see Druid's terrible single target that people like to talk about. Now, do remember that we are still in, you know, like the leveling stages of the game, but I think it's important to highlight realistic gameplay that people are going to experience. Uh, the map boss is dead, by the way. Um, so that guy is finished, so we can go ahead and claim our loot. Um, okay. Now, let's talk about a few uh, advanced terms, right? Well, not advanced terms, but, you know, things that you'll be wanting to aim for. So, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and open up this skill tree. Just to kind of show you guys what I have invested into. Now, again, the reasoning for Earth Spike is it's our generator, right? Um, the main reason I have Earth Spike is because I am currently running Earth and Might. So, whenever I do that big slam, whenever I'm hitting a bunch of mobs, there's a good chance Earth and Might will end up procking and it will basically restore all of my spirit back, thus giving us another two or three slams. You notice how big a slam was, right? We killed the boss in like five slams. So even if you don't get the most consistent procs, once you start getting your lucky hit up, this ends up being really strong. Because I was leveling mainly with Tornado, I was using Perfect Storm for the longest time. I even think right when you unlock it, Ursine Strength is really not even that bad. On top of Ursine Strength giving you life, remember that life doubles with Fortify, so whenever you're getting one extra life, you can get one extra Fortify, which is two in total extra overpower. So these are really, really nice things. 
I do think Urson, Urson Strike, or, uh, sorry, Urson Strength is very strong. <clears throat> so, going a little further uh, into some passives. Most of the passives I didn't pick up until a bit later. I, I wanted to focus on my core skills, right? So, Heart of the Wild is giving me bonus spirit. The only reason I have this is because I'm relying on my spirit filling from various effects, right? Uh, I've got three points in your core skills, cost more spirit, but deal increased damage. I might remove these for basic skills, generate spirit. Pulverize all the way into um, your next pulverize is overpowered, uh, and enemies hit deal reduced damage. Close enemies uh, are have a higher chance to be crit. Bonus damage reduction in werebear stance. Increase your non-physical resistance. Debilitating roar, which I don't even know if I use. I always forget to use it. Debilitating Roar fortifies you. Very good way to fortify. Debilitating Roar heals you. Remember, I would personally go with Bulwark as well here instead of Blood Howl. But Blood Howl is also not bad because it heals you very consistently, uh, regains CDR when you kill mobs, and it generates spirit. Moving a little further, um, over here we've got Trample. Trample deals gig damage on the first hit. Trample generates extra spirit. Earth skills... Remember that our pulverize is now earth deals increased damage to slowed enemies. Remember it now slows, right? Very good synergy there. Critical strikes with earth skills fortify you for base life. This helps me consistently maintain the fortify, but I'll be honest, I don't really need this because when you're in grizzly form, you generate base life as fortify every second. Stone Guard, which is while you have Fortify over 50%, your Earth skills deal increased damage. Now you notice a lot of my skills have one point in them, but these one point are not actual points invested. These are just for my gear, right? It's just giving like random plus. Since it is now tagged as an Earth skill, it benefits off of the nature tag. Elites also increase your boss damage or elite damage. So very strong. When a shapeshifting skill transform you, it deals increased damage. So this is what I was talking about when you're doing the 1-2 playstyle, where you, you, you know, apply a regular skill, and then you shapeshift in. Regular skill, shapeshift, right? You're going to be using this a lot because it's your generator, right? So your generator will always pull you out of the werewolf form uh, if you are using the storm spike or, or spike, for example. Okay. Um, then over here, we've got the debilitating roar with the all res coming down into the fortify into the heal. Uh, oh, I think I already, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Where did, where did we end up? I think we're, we're done with that. Okay. Yep. Now, as for your paragon tree, um, honestly, you're going to go with like whatever glyph you get first, right? So I ended up going with vulnerability. It was the last glyph for me to unlock. And the main reason why is... I don't have a consistent way to apply vulnerability with this build, and since it does such big damage, you really want that vulnerability on that first hit when you're doing the chunky, chunky hit. So this is pretty much what my Paragon is right now. Uh, you'll notice I'm like coming down here into all this other stuff. I'm most likely going to pull out a lot of points and then go into another Paragon tree, which gives you increased damage. Uh, based on your health difference to the enemy as a werebear. And since we're all pretty much always full life, that's going to be a 50% multiplier to damage when we are at 100% and they're at 50%. So if that first pulverize doesn't kill them, oh baby, that second one will. <laughs> okay, and then I'm just going to kind of talk a little bit about the gear, and this is pretty much all I can say. So uh, I try to get life on almost everywhere I can. Life seems to be an incredible scaler, especially to your... Uh, your overpower but in general it just does a lot of uh it's just really good in terms of survivability right life is a i would take life over armor any day for example this is a very lucky drop that i found but realistically it's not needed because the permanent werebear doesn't actually do anything it just looks cool it's not actually changing anything very good defensive chest with the damage reduction uh, and the plus two werebear skills gloves over here gloves are a big one um, so I did not, I did not start plussing my gear till about 54, 53. There's a huge jump from world tier two to world tier three, where the gear goes up massively. Do know that you can get plus two pulverize on gloves. So this is a very big spot for damage. And if you plus them to five, it goes to plus three. For my jewels, I like to use damage reduction while fortified. They're very, very nice. Also, don't forget to look for sources like Spirit Cost Reduction. Helps a lot.
All right, that's pretty much about it. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys like Diablo 4. I'm personally having a blast and can't wait to continue playing on the live stream. So I'm going to catch you guys there. Thanks for watching, everybody. Remember, if you enjoyed the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, you can catch me streaming live every day, except for Sundays. But this Sunday, I will for D4 release at twitch.tv slash pox. See you guys all tomorrow.